Oh, hi there. Good afternoon. I'm talking about taking risks today. Um, are you a risk taking sort of a person? I suppose I'm really talking about the kinds of risks that's not necessarily the adrenaline uh, producing type of risk, but the, the type of risk that makes you feel a little scared, a little nervous, a little vulnerable and may actually pause you to make some critical decisions as to whether you're going to stay safe, play safe whether you're going to take the risk and go in a different direction. I'm Valerie Ling, clinical psychologist, director, founder of the Centre for Effective Living. Every time I say that term, that phrase, I'm, I'm Valerie Ling, it's risky business for me. It's risky. I don't particularly uh, feel a great sense of comfort. How many days am I doing this now? And while it's getting a lot easier to just whip out my old selfie stick, I can't even believe I'm holding a selfie stick, Without fail, I say that phrase and the noise in my head goes, you fake, you phony, who cares? Nobody wants to hear about you. So this is taking a risk. <laughs> so um, I'm pausing. I would normally do the clinical conversation on Tuesday and I've been waiting actually for this week to do it because uh, with the onset of autumn, it's a good time to raise and have the clinical conversation about seasonal affective disorder. But I will do that tomorrow. Today, I actually wanted to jump on live and talk about taking risks. And the reason I'm doing that is it goes a little bit like this. If you have been watching the videos, you can check out our YouTube channel as well. Um, some episodes ago, <coughs> in a behind the scenes segment actually, I talked about the fear of failure and I had returned to a particular cafe to actually um, document uh, my, my journey in terms of having made a very big decision this year. So I want to share a little bit about um, the background to that. This year, I've actually launched into a season where I'm learning to push my limits because I started to detect last year a tendency to play somewhat safe, right? Uh, I, I often, often talk about my running journey in that while I set myself the goal, for example, to hit five kilometers, I get very, very content <coughs> at the three kilometer point. <clears throat> And I can see this in some other areas of my world as well. I get to that point where I say it's good enough, <coughs> which is a very good phrase to use if you're battling perfectionism and perfectionism pushes you beyond what is a realistic limit or boundary and you want to say to yourself good enough, but probably not so helpful when you're actually tr avoiding some risks. You're actually not pushing yourself because you're a little bit afraid of what might come out of this. Uh, so, you know, it got me really starting to think last year about why is that? Why do I do that? And do you know what I started to realize? Lo and behold, because I now set three kilometer as the mark, <coughs> I was getting to 1.6 kilometers and saying, ah, now that's good enough. <laughs> 1.6 kilometers, that's good enough. And then came the, you know, the, the consequential thinking of, oh, you know, 1.6 kilometers, look at me, I'm doing okay, but actually no. I knew that if I was able to do three kilometers, that 1.6 kilometers wasn't really the goal. And it really got me thinking. And so this year, not quite in my running, but in some other areas of my life, I actually started to mark out where that three kilometer or 1.6 kilometer mark was for me. <clears throat> in my friendships, in my relationships, in my work, in um, some of my hobbies and creative pursuits, uh, in my own health. And in my own mental health as well. Where was I pitching the good enough mark? And could I reevaluate that? And I actually sat in a cafe uh, last year in November where I was actually looking at the um, looking at making a big leap in a particular direction. And I bought myself a card. Uh, on the card was a picture of a ballerina. Somewhere in the deep recesses of my memory is an inkling <coughs> that, or a memory that when I was little, I actually really wanted to dance. I actually wanted to be a ballerina and put on a little tutu and do my little twirls and dance. 
But somewhere along the line, I just started to believe that I couldn't do it. It wasn't me. Um, I would never be able to dance. And you know what? That crystallized even as an adult. I just don't dance. I do in my private world, like when nobody is looking and the house is completely empty. And I don't think anybody will see me. I do. And I bought that particular card as a, as a way to remind myself that because of that decision or belief that I held in my head that I don't dance, I can't dance, I'll never wear the tutu, it actually spilled over into other areas of my world. Socially, for example, if I go to parties, I'm very not, I'm, I see, I'm even stumbling over my words because the anxiety is getting to me. The thought of actually getting up and having a bit of a dance is just, oh, just, like, I just can't do it. I'm not sure if I should be putting this in public, in the public scene or live now because I'm pretty sure in the next few social outings, if people are watching this, I'm going to be dragged onto the dance floor. I'm willing to take the risk. <laughs> so in that card, I decided that I was going to actually uh, recast some decisions and, and talk about and, and make sure that I would revisit this scenario in my head, right, to remind myself of taking risks. So as I was driving home today, because I've had a full day of clinic today, <clears throat> um, I did back to back, uh, really wonderful, meaningful conversations I've had today. Lo and behold, the thing about taking risks was a real thing. It started with, you know, sometimes it's easy to play safe so that other people don't judge you. Sometimes it's easier to not take that risk because life could actually really go upside down topsy turvy. Sometimes it's better not to take that risk because that relationship is too precious. I'm afraid what might happen if I did this or I said this. You know, and, and I got it got me reflecting on my way home. <clears throat> what what is the big deal about risk, right? Do we real is it really important to step out of our comfort zones? And then I thought to myself, well, <coughs> <clears throat> excuse me. The best thing that can happen about avoiding risks is that you stay safe. And then I said, okay, what's so good about staying safe? What's so good about staying safe is that you are in the familiar. And then I asked myself, and what's so good about staying familiar? Well, if you stay in the, in the familiar, you stay surrounded and encased um, in a manageable, containable world. And I was going to stop there. And then I thought to myself, so basically avoiding risks mean you stay safe and you stay small, contained. And then I asked myself, but maybe that's not, that's not good enough, staying small. What would happen if we all remained small? What would happen if we curled up into a, into a safe zone? Yes, it might feel better, but in the end of the day, it might not actually lead to, to outcomes that we, we want to live with. What's so bad about staying small? What's so bad about staying small is that we never figure out that the next step could be the step that changes it all. So I want to just start the conversation by saying, <coughs> what's, so get, what's so great about taking risks? Number one, taking risks be, brings clarity. When you actually do some risky, scary stuff, and I'm not talking the adrenaline type stuff, I'm, I'm really just talking about <coughs> pushing ourselves out of the comfort zone. <clears throat> when you start experimenting with some of these risk-taking directions you get a lot of clarity actually you start to figure out <clears throat> what you're really willing to put your stake on <clears throat> to put your stake on and say yeah I, I believe in this I'm going to keep going you also might get some clarity that that's not really what I'm on about no I tried that decision on for size and not so much me move on to the next thing but what's so great about taking risks number two is that sometimes stumbling on a mistake, you get feedback, you get perspective, you get other people's views <coughs> on the situation or how you might have done that, get positive feedback as well. Just because you stumble on a mistake doesn't necessarily mean that it was bad altogether, <coughs> but you get some feedback. <coughs> What's so good about taking a risk is that you grow, you don't stay the same. Uh, you actually charge up your neural pathways to have new connections. <clears throat> you might have new conversations. You might get new knowledge. You might get um, new uh, pathways for yourself. 
what's so great about taking risks? <clears throat> well, what's so great about taking risks as well is that you move, you move. <laughs> You're not in the same spot forever, right? None of us wants to actually be in the same position as we were five or 10 years ago. We want to be able to say that we've actually moved, right? That we've headed in some kind of a direction. These are, I'm making these rather intangible. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> finish up with maybe some practical scenarios where risk taking um, it can be actually a real sort of a thing. It might be crossing the hall to that person that you think could be a really good friend if you actually struck up the conversation and just said, hey, would you like to go for coffee? It might be applying for the job that you've actually avoided because you don't think you have the qualifications. You don't think that your experience counts for anything. <clears throat> and so you just haven't, you've clicked on the ad, but you haven't even started writing the letter, the cover letter, or putting together your, uh, your application or your CV together. It might be the um, upcoming social event that you're really, really dreading because you're starting to think that maybe everybody else will be comfortable there and you're going to be the only one who doesn't know how to make small talk and can't carry a conversation. And at the risk of finding out that maybe there could be another person there who would really welcome your presence at that event because they're feeling that way too. And gee, isn't it great to have someone just like them. And keeping it, I think, at, a, at a, a real level, a real, I guess, I guess for me as a mental health professional, it could be the risk of picking up the telephone and saying, hey, I'm actually not coping. I'm not doing so well. <clears throat> I need some help. Would you come with me to that appointment? Or would you help me find out what the next steps could be? Or simply, would you help me? Would you stay with me during this moment? And would you walk through this path with me? Now, each of those scenarios are scenarios which come up quite a bit as I talk to people. And so I'm pretty sure that if it's come up in my everyday world as I'm talking to people, it's probably come up with you as well. So is it exhausting? Uh-huh. Is it scary? Mm-hmm. Is it worth it? Yeah, it really is. If you know you can go three kilometers and you're only doing 1.6 kilometers and really at the moment, not even a hundred meters, then it's worth it. It's worth it to just say, no, nah, I, I think I want to move in a different mental space. I think I want to have a different mindset. I think I want to keep growing. I think I still want to have that input that might feel risky or scary, but who knows tomorrow, a week, a month, a year, it's not going to feel that bad after all. Okay, I'll catch you later.